What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Calvin, the new trader. We are live here in the studio today. I'm super excited. Today, we're going to have a conversation with a fellow new trader that's on the journey. He currently works construction, um, but he has been documenting his journey to be a full-time trader, to really elevate his lifestyle, to, to create new opportunities financially for his, his fiance, his beautiful daughter. And so I wanted to have this conversation because we want to just confess the realities of being a new trader. What it's like to be realistically balancing your job, the commitments you have as a man, the commitments you have as a father, and also growing in this skill set and getting better with trading and becoming more consistent. So today is going to be a real talk conversation um, about the journey of being a new trader. So my guest, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, Stretch FX. What's up, Stretch? How you doing, bro? Man, so first time we tried this, yeah. <laughs> I left the batteries for the camera. Right. And uh, now we're here in the studio. So, uh, and I still ended up leaving something, <laughs> but it's all good because the studio covered it. Right. But man, I'm excited to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here, bro. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. It's a privilege to have you, man. And so this journey, this journey of trading Forex, um, you are currently working construction, right? Yes, sir. And you were pretty like high up in that field. You've been doing yeah, this for a minute. I've been at this company for four or five years. Man, February is going to be five years straight. So right now, I mean, I work my way up the ladder right now. Currently, I'm a machine operator. Yeah. So, yeah. How did you get involved with Forex? How did you hear about this skill set? How did you get involved with it? And what was that light bulb moment for you that made you just say, hold up, like, this is something that can change my life, my daughter's life, my fiance's life. When did that start? All right, I'm going to take you back to August 2020. August 12, 2020. I actually remember the exact day. I was working at work like a normal day. I seen something on Instagram because I'm always on Instagram. I seen something on Instagram about Forex. Didn't really pay much attention to it. But the second time I seen it, I was like, like, what is this? I seen like a chart or whatever like that. And my mom, like, this has something to do with the stock market. So, like, if I see anything like this again, I'm going to do some research because, obviously, um, I'm a spiritual person. And I do pay attention to consistency. Like, I watch the universe and I watch things that I feel as if God is trying to get my attention on. So, later on that evening before I got out of work, I seen it again. Someone that I know posted on their Facebook and Instagram story, do you want to know how to trade Forex? So, in my mindset, I'm like, okay, this is definitely something that God is trying to grab my attention on. Let me do some research. So once I got off work, I went straight to the library downtown Miami, and bro, I just locked in. I was looking for books about Forex. When on Google, when you type in Google, what is Forex, um, baby pips come up. So when baby, when baby pips came up, I basically locked in on doing, they have like little courses in there, and it's pretty much, for the ones that don't know, it's basically like a beginner's phase on understanding what, what is Forex. So um, the next day, I decided to not go to work, and I just went to the library, and I was just locking in all the way in and I went on YouTube, I typed in like what is Forex and Swaggy C came up and I was binge watching his YouTube video just to basically get the understanding on what is like, what is the skill? Like how do you make money out of it? How do I get inside of it? So um, after locking in with it, I'm telling him he has a, I was his website, he had a course and I debated about getting his course at that moment and then I just continued to lock in on watching YouTube videos. So, um, so after that, I decided, it had to be like a few months later, I started demo trading. I understood how to, did research on how to fund my demo account. And it, it amazes me that I was able to grow like $10 on a demo to like $100 and $100 to $1,000. And you know how it is when you're a beginner trader, you post a picture on your social media. Oh, I just turned $10 to $100. I'm sure you guys all know about that. You're excited. So, you're man, excited. Yeah, man. I was like, man, this is going to be easy money. So, um... I decided to fund my account, I think like $100. Mm. Blew it. I blew it within like an hour. Just trying to grow, a, I think like 100 It was like $90 something because when you do Bitcoin, they take away a little oh, bit. Oh, you of, was talking about, you trading Bitcoin already? No, 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 no. no. Oh. No, when I, when I fund my, my, my oh, broker, okay. I use Hugo's Way. Hugo's Way, yeah. You got to yep. go buy um, Bitcoin and then add it to your yeah, you broker's account. Yeah, you do it through your cash app. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Got you. Exactly. Okay, I understand what you're um, saying. I blew it, bro. It was like $97. Blew it. So I'm like, wow. man. I'm going to have to lock in try to figure out like how I lost this. Every time I was depositing live money, I was destroying it. Mm. And I like, there's something deeper that I'm not catching on to because on demo account, I'm I'm blowing it up. Yeah. On a live account, I'm destroying it. Like I'm melting through money. And like my first month, I lost 500 bucks. Immediately. Wow. Yeah. 
Okay. So that's the beginning. Like that's how I actually learned about what Forex, Forex was. Okay. So when was this? It's like August, what year was this? It's August 2020. Okay. Yeah. So we started the same year. Yeah. Yeah. So I right. started March 2020. So during, you started, started just a little COVID, bit. Yeah. During COVID. Yeah, yeah. Everybody like Google how to make money outside that's of the job. Weird. Right. So, okay, cool. Now, so you go through baby pips, you're learning how to trade. Right. Um, you put some money in, you lose it. And then you ended up. So this is August when you first started. Right. When did you lose that 500? Like, was it the Bro. same month? Around September. It took September. Like a, yeah. Yeah, so about a month. Because I, I wanted to understand, like, what it was. It took time, and I was sacrificing my job. Even when I was at work, I was just on baby pips, doing little mm. the questionnaires. And I was even posting that, like, I, I finished this assessment, thinking it was all part of it. And yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought, like, lost that 500 bucks. I was like, man, I got to buy a course. Yeah. I got to buy a course because, I mean, I was. I remember that Swaggy was saying somebody, you can get all this free material on YouTube, but you have to get a mentor. Mm. So he was my mentor. I bought his course. He had a discount. I think it was like two ninety nine. How much did you pay for his course? I think it was like two ninety nine or three hundred. Okay. He had a, it was on discount. Okay, gotcha. I gotcha. took advantage of that, mm -hmm. bought it, and I was just locked in on it, but not the way that I should be because I was just trying to get some information out of it, mm -hmm. do a live account, and I was blowing it. So, so how man. much of a financial commitment was that because you just lost five hundred? Yeah, like we can't skip past that. You just yeah, lost five hundred dollars. Okay, right. so you're in the hole that you're working a job. Right. Like in Miami, that's a big chunk yeah, of cool. your living expenses right. already gone for the month. Right. You know what I mean? So now you're getting ready to buy a course for three hundred dollars. Yeah, you got it on a discount, but three hundred dollars that's still that's eight hundred now that you've just poured into this skill set. Right. How was that affecting you financially, if you can remember? All right. So as for me, my assets and liabilities, my assets are pretty high than my liabilities. Um, also, I communicated with my fiance because my money is our money. Her money is our money. I let her know, look, um, babe, I found this skill. I actually want to um, I want to learn it. I'm going to have to and put money into it. You can't. It's not guaranteed I'm going to make money, but I feel I'm going to change my life within a year. Like We're going to get up out of this within a year or six months. That's the mindset I had. Yeah. I'm sure everyone had that same mindset. Like You're going to be able to get this skill and be rich in a month. <laughs> you already or, know. Or, or six months. Yeah, it does not work like that. <laughs> it does bro. not work that way. It doesn't way. work like that. <laughs> I was in for a rude awakening. Bro, it humbled me as yeah. a person, bro. So, yeah, um, I explained to my girl I want to buy this course. Once I get paid, I'm going to go ahead and knock this course out. Learn the skill so I can be able to change our lives. Yeah. Um, within a short period of time. I love it. All right. Yeah. So a couple things you said there is powerful. You communicated with your fiance. Right. I think that's so awesome. Bro, that's important. Mm. And not just communication, I mean communication, but understanding. Like she understood where I was coming from. She understands my predicament and she understands she knows how I am when it comes to once I learn something new, I lock all the way in. I put my whole life on the line when I when I learn anything new. Wow. Right. So was it like that when you were learning like how to be a machine operator? When yeah, when, construction I, field, when it comes to that, in? bro, I just bought keys on on um, on Amazon mm. and I just got on a machine. I taught myself. Wow. Um, I'm also a graphic designer. When I learned how to do uh do graphics, I locked in, learned it. Wow. I learned that when I was in high school in 2010 when I moved to Miami. Mm. Um, I learned that skill, fell in love with it, started a business, and bro, I still have my business. But um, throughout this this um, I think later on we're gonna probably get down this this rabbit hole, mm -hmm. but um, I had to basically sacrifice my business for the moment and just lock in because I didn't want to deal with anyone, any clients, um, want me to do flyers for them or anything. I just wanted to just lock all the way in for the next six months. Wow, wow, wow. This is good stuff. All right, so your wife knows this about your characteristics, how yeah. when you lock in, you can do it. You've done it with your construction job. Right. You taught yourself how to work these big machines, right. right? Number two, you've done it with graphic design. You taught yourself how to do that. Start a whole business doing that. Right. And so you communicated, hey, babe, like I'm- Everything. I'm, yeah, so I'm, I lost 500. I want to invest in this course. Um, I'm getting it on a discount. It's going to be 300. And how, like, what was her response? How did she take that? Like- she was one hundred percent with it, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, this is anyone that supports you. She's like, "Are you sure you want to do this? Um, you think you got this?" I'm like, "Yeah, I think I got it." 
Wow. And I was I bought the course. I mean, and still to this day, I don't regret it because yeah. it was basically the, the the foundation on how to trade. He explained like what is Forex, the acronym of foreign, foreign exchange. Like prior to me even getting his course, I never heard of Forex. Mm. Um, I've never heard of a foreign exchange, any of that. But the way that he broke it down on his YouTube channel, Swaggy C, man, I really understood the basics and the foundation of it. Man, and also dope. um the support resistance that's how I tra started trading with him with support wow. resistance wow so man this is really good because i think that communication is something small but it's so important yeah. in a relationship and Absolutely. that's how i was in the beginning i lost five hundred dollars i funded my first account i was demoing at first right. and i was making money demoing and then i funded my first account with uh with five hundred dollars and i lost it i blew it and i told my wife i was like man i blew it and uh she said the same thing she's like well try again we'll put another five in mm -hmm. there so that's same. so i can clearly relate with you right. when you say like keeping that transparency there that communication open it really does go a long way it does and i could just say from being eight years married um that if you keep that up y'all gonna have a long happy marriage bro like yeah. when y'all finally get married like it's gonna be full of blessings it's gonna be rewarding because communication really is key and, and like when i think on times where like our marriage has faced like a rocky moment it was because of a lack of communication mm -hmm. so that's so like i just agree with you a thousand percent so that's a good gem right there for all my male traders out there and female traders communication with your spouse your significant other is very very important totally agree with that so let's dig into here a little bit more so now you get this course with swaggy he's going over all this stuff he's 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 breaking down what forex is now you're getting a, a clear understanding of what you're doing because right. before you just doing it you right, know what i mean exactly. like i'm just, just trying to make some money it. yeah i'm pressing buttons i'm trying to make some money right. look like it's going up i'm taking buys look like it's going down i'm right. taking sales exactly yeah so now swaggy is teaching you how to actually you know get an understanding of what you're doing you're learning about the history of forex you're learning mm -hmm. support and resistance you're doing all those type of things correct so now we're in september october now in your journey so what's happening now that you're getting this information? Are you pausing your live trading and just studying? Or are you still trying to take the knowledge you're getting like, oh, snap, he just said something. Let me jump into the market and try that out. Like, what you doing? To be honest, like, I was like, locked, in, locked in on demo. Locked okay, in on locked demo in on account. demo. Every now and then, I would fund my account 20 bucks. And this is what I would do. I like that. And I'm sure some people can probably relate to me. Mm. When the stock market opened 930 exactly, Whatever I see, I was trading NAS 100. Mm. If I see it go up a little bit, I will buy it and immediately lose the whole, I will blow the account. Literally. Yeah. Like, right. And I'm doing this almost <laughs> every couple of days. Yeah. And it adds up. Like, I mean, until I became profitable, I probably lost 5,000 bucks, bro. Are you serious? All, like, as of to this, this moment. Yeah. Combined, even failed challenges too. Only took three challenges. I've, I've lost five bands. Come on, man. 5,000. This is... This right here, ladies and gentlemen, this is the confessions of a new trader, right? This is the real reality of it. We talked about this yesterday. So I was at Doyle's meet and greet yesterday, and we were talking about this. You know, I was talking with a couple of traders that I met there, um, uh, that I met there, and I was just talking about you're going to, like, you just got to get, you. there's no way around it. That's when you it. come into this, you're going to pay the market. You're going to take those bumps and bruises. You got to pay your dues. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's real. You're going to pay your dues. So anybody watching this right now, new beginner developing trader, you're going to lose money. And you got to be okay with that because if this is something that we want to do, we got to be okay with it. I've lost probably tens, like over 10,000 in total of just like everything right you know it could be maybe close to 20 i don't know but if i really sit down i know it's over 10 that i've lost in funded challenges um uh, live accounts like just combined together it has to be like over 10 you know what i mean that i have lost and that's just a part of the beast but i've also made a good amount of money too right. so it like when you look at what you have lost and when you start being profitable, if you look at what you've made, it it always works out. Yeah, and for you, you know, you're at a place right now, which is why I wanted you on this podcast, where you're starting to get closer to your profitable side, consistently profitable side. Right. Like you've had wins, right. but now you're getting to that place where, okay, I now I see what I need to do. I see what I need to do Correct. to sustain that profitability over time. And so you're starting to see the other side a little bit. Right. And it's going to come, bro. Because yeah. everybody that I've talked to, they've all said it. Charlene FX, she said it on this podcast. 
you know, I lost 60 grand in a year, you know, which was like almost what I was making at my job as a police officer at that time. But it took that moment. And now you look at what she's making now. You know, she did 100K in a month. All right. You know, and that's not speculation. That's what she has put out to the world. So when you do the math, it's worth it. You know what right. I mean? And so anyway, I just want to throw that out there. It's 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 worth it, guys. It's worth it to stick with it if you believe in it. If you just want to do this with some quick money, it's probably not worth it for you. But if you're willing to lock in and you really want this to be a part of your portfolio, you want to multiply money, it is worth it. And I know it's worth it. And I'm going to stay on this journey and continue to push those that want to do this for real, for real. All right. Anyway, so we're now in uh, October, November, December of your first year of trading. You got Swaggy's course, you're demo trading, learning new things, you're demo trading. Um, when did you finally get back into a live account or start taking a challenge? Like, when does that happen? It was going to 2021. Oh, it's a new year re resolution. I'm going to get rich. I mean, I'm, I'm, my mindset was always, oh, I'm going to lock in and I'm going to get this. Uh, I'm going to make a lot of money. And I was demo trading, obviously started the year demo trading a little bit, live trading, and just as before, I was blowing accounts left, and I couldn't understand, I couldn't understand why. Like, I'm demo trading, and I'm doing my thing on demo trade. I'm profitable on demo trades. I'm, I'm growing smaller accounts. But on a live account, I'm, I'm up for a little bit, and then you start over trading because obviously when you have a small account, you're just going to over leverage. I mean, Facts. like, because in reality, like, you shouldn't want to have to risk 1% or 2%. No more than 3% of your account on the, on the trade. But when you have a $100 account, you're not going to be satisfied with $3 mm. on, on, a, on trying to, well, risk. like if you're going for a one-on-one, -on -one, mm. oh, you're not going to be satisfied with $3 out of $100. You're not going to be satisfied with 20 You're going to make, like flip the whole account from 100 to 100 And that will cause greed, over trading, um, and it's going to knock your psychology off the meat rack. Like you're going to be trading all over the place. All right, so going into New Year, I was... Trading a lot of live accounts, making money here and there. And 2021 was when I got my first withdrawal, which was, I think, like 100 bucks. So I was like, okay, now I got this now. When I got my first um, withdrawal, I was like, yeah, I got this. And I ended up funding again, and I was losing, 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 losing. I was like, man, like this this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And my mindset was just straight technicals. Yeah, My mindset at that, at, at that time it's trading is all technicals. I was hearing Swaggy C saying, oh, trading is 5% technicals, 90% uh, 90, 90%, uh, mental. Yeah. It was going through one or the other. Mm. But once you in, like, once you really in there, you will understand, like, yo, this is mental, bro. Like, this is a mental war Yeah, that you're going against with yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, like, how I was going about the beginning of 2021. During the mid of 2021, um, I was... I was, a little, I was getting a little bit more profitable, but still I was very inconsistent. It was like inconsistent throughout the whole year. What's your mindset like? Like you see the potential. You're right. in a course with Swaggy. Right. So you seeing like the lifestyle, you know, and you seeing this man elevate his life, right? Correct. And you want that. But every day you getting up and you going and you working this construction job. How are you staying grounded or are you staying grounded? I'm be honest, no. Um, no, because for one, um, while learning how to trade Swaggy's way, I realized that I'm a New York session trader and I work during those hours. I work from 7 to 3.30. The hours that I want to work, I'm at work. Asian session is too slow. Tokyo session is not for me. And London session, I'm not waking up in the middle of the night when I know I got to wake up in the middle of the morning to get ready to go to work. Mm. Like I'll be all over the place. I won't be right mentally. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, I got to start getting this together when I'm at work. I got to try to make something happen when I'm at work. And so that's where it started me going to hide inside of apartments to try to trade and stuff like that. And the way I was doing it, bro. All it right. So for anybody that don't get what he's saying, when he says hide in apartments, <laughs> he's building <laughs> big like condominiums in Miami like that's the construction site he works at so when he says he's hiding apartments he's actually stopping his work going into one of the the uh, condos or apartments that they're building and then he's taking out his laptop and trading studying doing that type of stuff literally <laughs> literally I'm literally watching out the door make sure I make sure I look out the window and I'm able to see my manager on the other side of the compound 
<laughs> so that will give me a sense of ease. And let me just make sure there's no no people that's gonna snitch on me down the hallway or working working like the um the floor that I'm on. Uh-huh. And most of the time it's it's cool. And also, I mean, when I first started my YouTube channel, bro, um, with this YouTube channel, I was in the water truck, bro. I was in the wow. water truck trading, um, looking around, and there was one time there was a guy that came up, and I'm like, I'm, I'm looking, make sure he don't see that I'm in a truck, and I'm recording. And word got to my manager that um, I was doing something on my laptop when I'm supposed to be doing something when he was looking for me. And I'm like, oh, man, like, I got to try to figure something out because this is getting outrageous. Mm. Like, I'm really going far and beyond my own self to try to trade. And, bro, it was nothing good out of it, like, man, because I was, my psychology was out of it. Like, it yeah. was crazy. Yeah. Like, when you're trying to be sneaky, trying to hide and do something, bro, you got this in your subconscious that you got to make sure that your manager ain't watching you, and you're trying to trade, too. So mm-hmm. there's no... No equilibrium right there. It's, it's, it's nothing. And the part that I had to realize is that, Calvin, like, you could really mess up your business. Oh, yeah. Trying to chase something that's not paying you right now. And I think a lot of times we don't, like, that doesn't register. You know what I mean? Because the Instagram, the YouTube, all of that stuff is so accessible that we watch a person and we think we know a person, like we actually know a person. And so when you think you know somebody from quote unquote online, right? And you see them making all these great profits, you start to think, well, I know that person. I know their story. I know their journey. If they're doing it, I can do it too. And then that has you thinking that forget this job, even though you show up there every day because you know, you need that job or you need that business, right? Correct. In your mind, you thinking, I don't need it. And you thinking you can do what you see that person you watching doing. Right. But the results ain't the same. Right. You know what I mean? And 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 like that's a dangerous place, bro. I know. Because yeah, it's a dangerous because I've been there, bro. It's like I was about to cut <laughs> some some clientele for my business early on. And I'm like, bro, I don't need to be doing this. You know what I mean? Like you take that one loss and then reality hits you like. Let me slow down a little bit. You know what I mean? And so when you realize that, did that make you frustrated? Did that make you like stop like like doing what you was doing? Or did you continue to duck off and try to trade? Bro, I didn't stop, bro. No, mm. I'm a type of person, nothing can't stop me. Mm. Like, the only thing that can stop me is myself. Like there's times my girl even give me advice. Like I gotta give a shout out to my fiance, man. Like she really like my backbone mm. mentally. And emotionally, like she balanced me out because I'm amazing. at time I'm an impulsive decision maker, mm-hmm. and I, I move very fast. And mm-hmm. sometimes I will oversee things. And she was seeing things from the outside, things that I was doing that I was acknowledging. I wasn't acknowledging that I was doing, and it allowed me to be able to look into myself and be like, okay, I'm really trying to rush this trading thing to try to become a, a, a rich person and try to have the fancy jewelry. I'm trying to rush this. Yeah. And bro, it humbled me. Mm. And yeah, so now it's like well at that at that time I'm like okay I just gotta lock in because like I said at that mind at that time frame I'm only thinking technicals like psychology psychology didn't hit me at this moment 2020 2021 psychology didn't hit me yet yeah I didn't know training was psychology yet even though they was preaching it it wasn't hitting me and they be preaching it boy no, they be preaching it <laughs> I be preaching it <laughs> and but it's easier C, said than done easier said than done it though. is Swaggy C was the only person I was actually paying attention to YouTube. At that time, mm. and then I start like, like expanding more, and I found Doyle. Yeah, shout and out to like, my boy Doyle. Yeah, shout out to Doyle, man, for real, bro. So, um, I start watching his YouTube channel, and he was doing Fibonacci's and stuff like that. And oh, that was early Doyle, yeah, right there. Yeah, <laughs> I was watching his older videos, and I realized he started doing supply and demand. I'm like, man, that's kind of that's nice. And I met some guy inside of Doyle's Discord. Well, not Doyle's. I'm sorry. Inside a Swaggy C Discord group. I guess it was a Discord group or a server. And I started interacting with him. He's now my mentor. Wow. Um, Marty VFX, shout out to you too as well, bro. Um, I started learning from him. He started giving me information on Doyle. He advised me to look, bro, do you trade supply and demand? I'm like, no. I was watching some information on Doyle. He was like, bro, lock in with supply and demand. It's going to change you. Mm. And bro, when I did, like I realized my win rate was like up there. That's dope. Yeah, I was starting winning trades, and I was like, okay, the supply and demand is on point. Started doing live trade, bro, and I would be up money, but I would blow it. 
Mm. And still at this time, psychology was not there yet. Yeah. It was not there yet. In my mind, psychology was not a part of trading. It was so how would you feel, bro? How does that feel when you finally, you find something? Because I think we all get to this place as new traders. We all get to this place where it was like, we find something new. Like me, I'm always working and discovering different strategies and tweaking Correct. things. And so you find something that got this amazing hit rate, right? Correct. Like you got, you know, a 70% win rate, 80% win rate, you know what I mean? Et cetera, whatever the case may be. And you find something, great hit rate, it's doing great. But then you lack the psychology to manage the trades once you're in it. So you, so maybe you get out early or you hold too long and it come back and eat you up, right? right? Whatever the case may be. How does, like, how did that make you feel when it's like, okay, things are looking good now. I found something that works. I learned supply and demand. But now the psychology eats up the potential profits that could be there. How does that feel in the moment, bro? Okay, so <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Uh, I'm saying to myself, all right, I've been in this trading for a whole year, mm. and I'm keeping the same results, but this guy's making a whole lot of money. Mm. I'm watching on YouTube, people are flipping $20, $100 to thousands of bucks, bro. So like something is just not right because I'm seeing that my setups are here. I can be winning, and, and I end up blowing everything that I just made. I will blow it all in one trade. Wow. So that's when I begin to start looking into myself. I'm like, okay, this this has to be me. Like, what am I doing wrong or what am I missing here? And then um, it was, it, bro, and this is my favorite YouTube video, bro. Do, Doyle psychology videos, man. Mm. That's where everything really started to make sense to me. And I'm like, okay, now I'm seeing why everyone is saying trading is 90% psychology or 95% psychology and 5% technicals. Because when you are up, at times, you got to get what the market gives you, and you got to leave, bro, because you'll end up revenge trading, you'll end up over trading, and all that stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, now I got this down pat, I'm going to go get a challenge. Yeah, That was my mindset. I'm going to go get a 10K challenge. Mm. And I, I bought FTMO 10K challenge, and uh, I filled it with flying colors, bro. <laughs> like, I, I, bro, I, I, and I even said on my YouTube, I filled it, bro. And my guy say I filled it with flying colors. Bro. Yeah, absolutely, man. Mm. Yeah, I, should, I deserve the plaque off how bad I felt that one, bro. Wow. Yeah, it was bad, and I was like, so man. was it because? Because this is what happens with me, right? When I first started doing funny challenges, I would, for some reason, I would get overexcited. It's like I'm trading the personal. I'm doing great. Then I say, okay, let me go get a funded, right. and so I I buy it, and I just get antsy, bro. Just get like, you know, like start, I ain't gonna say feeling myself, but I just get impatient and just jumpy, bro. Where it's like, okay, if I take that first trade and that first trade a loss, when you're doing funded challenges, that first trade is so pivotal. Mm -hmm. If it's a loss, it will spiral you into this defense mode, bro. Where <laughs> you just feel like, you know, bro. yeah, like you just gotta get it, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get back, you know, on top or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But for some reason, for me, man, just when I first like really started trying to get more funded accounts. Well, actually, no, no, no. Cause my first three funded accounts, I tried with FTMO. I failed them all. Like I, with two of them, I did, I did get to phase two, but I always would drop the ball, bro. Always. Like, I don't know if it was the 10% target or what, but I would just get antsy. Like I can't explain it, bro. I just, I would just get antsy. So for you, like, what was it? Like you, you uh, failed it with flying colors. What was it? Like, were you over trading? Were you using big risks? Like, what was, was it? Everything. Mm -hmm. I tried to. I tried to hit it with a one hit wonder. Ah, uh, you tried to do one trade, pass what? it. Man. <laughs> he say what? Because <laughs> I'm like in my mind, okay, if I pass this phase one, pass this phase two, I got ten thousand dollars to trade with. Ah, yeah. I think that's what it was for me too. Yeah, I wanted you're to thinking rush about it. the end result I the whole time. My, I wanted to quit my job. Bro. Mm. I wanted to quit my job. You talking? You, yeah. you talking bro, about all something All my challenges, now. that was the main goal. I wanted to quit my job, bro. Mm. That's the thing. So the only thing in your mind is, go. this is the only thing that's standing in front of me leaving my this job. This is the only thing, and I wanted to rush it. I wanted mm. to do it quick. So you was trying to, so basically your mindset was, if I get this 10K account, were you thinking you could flip that account every month and make 10000 or were you thinking, okay, maybe no. I could do five. Like 5K a month. I ain't gonna lie with the account. mindset that I did have at yeah. the beginning, 
I just want the um I want just I just want to get the money and be able at, at that time too, my risk management wasn't really the, the brightest. Mm-hmm. I was saying to myself, I'm gonna probably risk three percent on each trade and take one trade a day. No one trade no, I'm sorry, I take that back. Mm-hmm. I told myself I'm gonna trade one percent each trade, and if I lose three percent, I'm done. If I lose three percent in a day, I'm done. Yeah. And bro, I was just I was doing everything you're not supposed to do. Yeah. I was over trading, I was over leveraging. I was I was not having a stop loss, um, and I knew better. Yeah, uh, I was not having a stop loss, and I was trying to rush the process, bro. Mm. Uh, and I thought that after that challenge, I was like, okay, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not going to do it the next time I do. It. <laughs> yeah, I we always myself. say that. We always say that. Yeah. By the next challenge, same thing. And then, yeah. bro, here's the part though. So you fail a challenge account. Like this was my thing. I will fail a challenge account. And then I'll tell myself, next time you do one, you're going to do it the right way. I would start the next one. The first trade, I'll do it the right way, right? Have my 1% risk. You know what I mean? I'll set a stop loss. If I lose that trade, man, forget that. I'm going all in on the next trade. <laughs> it's funny because you're absolutely right. And I'm glad that I'm... I'm glad that I experienced the same thing you did because Facts. it let me know that I'm human and that I had to be on somewhat on the right track. Bro. bro, this is, bro, at the end of the day, what we got to understand, and that's why I'm just so thankful to God for the vision that he's given me in this space to do and represent the new beginner and developing traders. Right. We need to normalize growing and developing. For most of us, that are new beginner and development traders. We have never heard of being active investors, multiplying our money outside of exchanging time for money. Correct. The only thing we know on how to put some money in and make more back is gambling on sports games, going to the casino, or playing like the, uh, <laughs> you know, in our communities, the ticket with the horses and the dogs run. Yeah, you, yeah. Know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's all we know in terms of putting a little bit of money in and hopefully getting a lot back. Correct. It's gambling. Right. So when we come into the largest financial market in the world, foreign exchange market, like we have to learn. We have to unlearn and relearn. Shout out to Roger Banks. That's his saying. You have to unlearn to relearn, right? Right. So we have to unlearn that gambling mindset because that's how we've seen people flip money. Mm -hmm. Either that or buying some drugs and then flipping it that way, right? Correct. We have never just had a cousin or uncle that was, oh, yeah, I'm a day trader. You know what I mean? Right. We are the first generation in our family that's becoming the day traders, the active investors, all that type of stuff. So we have to, and that's why, again, to God, I thank God so much, right, for just allowing me to host this platform that's all about embracing the journey as a new beginner development trader. The losses will happen. The blown challenge accounts will happen. You know what I mean? It will happen. It still happens for me sometimes. It happens. But you're still growing. Like this new thing, you know, that I was telling you in the beginning of just like 10 years. It's like 10 years. If we're not willing to put 10 years into this skill, then we don't really want it. And that's how I feel personally for me. So I'm in year three right now, all right? It's been three years and a couple months. Like, it don't matter how much success I have had. I will never feel like I've arrived in that I'm too good to blow an account, a funded account. You know what I mean? Um, And if something happens where I blew a personal account, no, that's not acceptable, but still, I'm still new. You know what I mean? I'm still new. I haven't mastered this yet. And for everybody listening, watching it, it's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay. Don't let the people that have been doing this for years and years and years belittle you and make you feel like you are not worthy or you are not, you know, great or you don't have the skill set just because you're making mistakes that you're expected to make when you're new at something and when this isn't what you've been doing culturally and what you've been raised around culturally. This is new for all of us, bro. Right. And um, so I embrace that. You know what I mean? And I will continue and embrace that. I will continue to embrace that because this, I know for me, I can't speak for everybody else, but I know for me, I'm committed, bro. Absolutely. I'm committed. Right. I'm like, bro, like I said something the other night at, at a Doyle's event. I said, um, I was telling somebody, look, 
if I have to grind in order to really get to the point where I'm making the type of money I want to make in trading, right? The type of money I came for. If it takes me till I'm 89 to grind from now, when I'm in my early 30s, and I have to grind to all the way to I'm 89 to get to the point where I'm making the type of money I came to Forex to make, and I die at 91, it was worth it. It was worth it because I got there. Right. And I was able to 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 uh live in that moment for two years. That's it don't matter. Yeah. As long as you get and I'm committed to get there. So as long as that matters, it don't matter how much I fail, it don't matter how much I lose, it don't matter how many people laugh at me, it don't matter as long as I get there. And I'm committed, I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. And so I think for people like us, bro, for you, which is how I found you through YouTube, just document your journey. You know what I mean? You were recently doing a challenge where you wanted to grow $11 to 1000 right? Something Correct. like that? Yeah. And you failed it. With flying colors. You, you failed it with flying <laughs> colors. Yeah. What gives you the motivation to lead in your weakness like that? To not be ashamed to say, hey, I tried it. You know, the odds were against me. I tried it. I blew it publicly. I put it out there. But I'm still on my journey. It's that I surround myself around positive people so I don't get that negative stuff. And also, like, my girl, she always sees the best in everything I do. Everything I do, I share with her. And she she gives me that push to go forward, even though I have it within myself, but it makes me feel good. Like, even though you can be uh, very independent or an extreme, like, grinder, you have it within you and you apply it to have someone with you, like by your side to push you as well, mm. bro, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling, bro. And it makes you think and know the sky is the limit, bro. Yeah. And not just that, um, I see other people, a lot of people have failed before, before. Failure is a part of success, bro. You have to go through your trial and error and learn from them and be able to elevate. And also, like I told myself, yesterday I did the same thing. I told myself, this is the last time and I feel it in my spirit. This is the last time I'm gonna ever trade an account under a hundred bucks. Mm. I, I and there was a twenty dollar account. I put in Nas trade. Oh, so you and, time out. You you yeah. really be trying to trade Nas with twenty dollars in your account? Yes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I love this honesty. Is, I love it. It's just the supply and demand, bro. It's just mm. it's, it's 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 beautiful, bro. And I'm sure you probably heard other people talk about supply and demand. I have. Bro, I it's have. bread and butter. Like, well, my man who's standing behind the camera right now, he <laughs> asked me the other day, "Do I trade supply and demand?" I say, "Bro." I don't, to me, it's all the same thing. I know there's a lot of people out there that's going to say technically it's not. But to me, the way I view the market, my support and resistance zones could be seen as supply and demand zones. The way I draw them. I'm the same way. Like, even if I have my supply and my demand, and I taught my girl this strategy, and mm -hmm. she's killing gold. Wow. When you have your supply and demand area, and you stretch it all the way to your left, it's a, supply, it's a support and resistance. Mm -hmm. And she uses that on a higher time frame, and she gets sniper entries, and she, bro, she does her thing. Nice. So, yeah, I agree with you when you say um, supply and demand is similar to... Um, well, for me, the way I view the market. Yeah, like, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people in the well. comments saying, no, Calvin, it's different. <laughs> look, to each his own. For me, the way I see the market, I've had people look at my charts, like my man behind the camera, Mikey. He said, bro, to me, it looked like, you know, you're doing supply and demand. Maybe right. it does. But the way I see the market, that's just how I see it. It's, but, gotcha, you gotcha. know, to each his own. Gotcha. Yeah. Right now, what's your goals? Uh, because you're growing these like twenty dollar accounts, like what just, are you trying to do? I just graduated that um, Friday. Like I told mm -hmm. myself, I promised myself this is the last one. Because when you have those small accounts, you're just trying to flip it. You're trying to do some some radical stuff. You're just yeah. trying to flip your account. And when you're just trying to do that, bro, it's just like you don't you don't have the proper risk. Let's just say if I was to lose the trade, mm -hmm. I lost my whole account. I'm basically risking a twenty dollar account to or ten dollar account, no matter what it is, um, and just like quadruple it, bro, and it's. You get tired of doing that. You just know it's not right. You know it's yeah, not right. Yeah. So, I mean, if I was to have, uh, let's just say, for example, a $20, $20 account compared to a $20,000 account. Mm -hmm. um, $20,000 account, you have 1%, which is, what is $200? Mm -hmm. I'll be willing to risk that $200, which is 1%, one, which is 1%, I think 1%, percent i never, I forgive me, um, for like 4%, 2 to 1. But um, when you got a small account, you're not going to be satisfied with that. You're not going to be satisfied. And you're going to be over trading. You're going to be, you're going to just be greedy. You'll be greedy. So yeah, I told myself yesterday was, I mean, Friday was the last time I'm going to do a, a small account like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that's man. over with. Yeah, bro. And so like as far as it goes, because it sounds like to me like, you know, 
maybe you didn't uh, like when you were doing that like maybe you didn't really just have like goals and targets like you was just kind of just like all right like right now i don't feel like buying another challenge you know like let me just challenge myself and see can i do this 20 to 100 like or uh, this 20 to a thousand right like was that like more so the mindset uh, but you really wasn't thinking about long-term goals no, it was just no, more no. like this something right now yeah, it was just something fun just yeah. to have something to sweat you know so have share. you thought about long-term goals Oh yeah, when okay. it comes to uh, like not not this week, later this week Friday, I'm gonna I'm gonna do another challenge, probably like a 50k or a 25k. But um, obviously, the last time I did a challenge was exactly 90 days ago, mm. uh, uh, March 27th. Mm -hmm. That was my turning point when it comes to trading as a whole. What it's, happened? All right, so that was all right. I did my final 10k challenge. I bought mm -hmm. security bag challenge. And I was up within the first two days, eight point nine percent. So I was like, okay, I got this in the belt. I'm ready for. I'm ready for phase two. On the, uh, that night, it was it was it was stupid, bro. I tried to trade it I, on NAS at night, trade NAS one hundred at night, which is outside of my trading plan. And I lost my first trade, and I like, you know what? I gotta get it back. I lost again, and I lo and I won a trade, and I lost, and I lost. And before you knew it, bro, I didn't even realize how much I lost. Um, I blew the, I, I did my daily loss. And I'm like, oh my God, I literally just did that to be up 8.9%. All I needed was 1.1% and I would have passed it. Yeah. And I was such a, I didn't know at first, like I was trying to do that because on my trading view, I just on my laptop, it has to buy and sell, click at the top, it disappeared. So I'm like, what's going on? I went to the settings, it wasn't there. And I swiped down and I seen the email and they said, I breached my daily limit. And I'm like, man, I did not just do that. I've been there, bro. Bro, that was the beginning of my new mindset. Because let me tell you something, bro. I I shut my business down. I'm no longer, I have not done graphics like at all. Mm. Um, and I just been completely locked in. I had my fiance to buy me trading a zone book. Mm -hmm. I read that book, um, The Disciplined Trader, thanks to you. I, wait, was it you? No, the one good trade I think yeah. I heard from you. I yeah, haven't started it yet, but yeah. that's I'm gonna start that probably. It's this really week. good, bro. Really um, good. The Discipline Trader. Um, even the Mark Douglas have a podcast on YouTube, bro. I've just been locked all the way in, bro. Yeah. And throughout the same time, I'm just adjusting my trading plan and my trading strategy to the best fit my 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 life mm -hmm. and my work schedule. So, bro, like right now, not including the way I traded my the, the little live account, that doesn't count. That's that's different, bro. Mm -hmm. Like the way I'm gonna go about this with this challenge, I know I'm gonna pass it. I know yeah. I'm gonna pass it, bro. Um, because like I know my psychology is on point. Um, not just that, bro. I just begin. I see confirmation throughout the universe. Like I'm very spiritual and I pay attention to almost everything, bro. Yeah. And I humble myself and like my fiance, she even realized that I've been changed like like the past two months. I'm a lot more humble. I'm like slowly to speak because usually I'm like like very active speaker, bro. I just I think about everything and it changed my perception on life, bro. Wow, like it's amazing how and I never thought that training had like would change me to the person I'm right now. I just thought it was just like technical analysis, bro. But this has changed me as a person, bro. Mm. So that's basically where I'm standing right now. Yeah, bro. Like I think it's important to look at those moments where you were right there, one and a half percent away, or whatever the case may be. And you mess it up. It's important to look at that because you look at yourself for what you are in that moment. And we're greedy in that moment. Yeah. I've been there so many times. 1% away, blow the whole challenge account. It's like, bro, what am I doing? You know what I mean? But it's like you you really get a, a grasp for who and what you are in that moment, which is greedy. And a lot of times you have to take that hurt, that pain, that frustration, and you have to channel that into like, look. I got to do this the right way. And honestly, um, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. But I honestly believe that that's the one place that people, j like, that they don't do that. Yeah. And I think that may separate uh, a consistent trader and people that get that get funded yeah. to the ones that are not. I think it's the shift of that mindset, what you yeah. just said. Like, you just got to hurt. Like, you got to get to a point where you, like, it's like the woman, and this is probably a bad example, but this is like a clear, transparent thing that we all can visualize because it's been depicted in so many movies. But it's like the woman that's being abused in a movie. You know, she continues to take it, can take it and take it. But something happens that last time and she's like, I'm not doing this no more. And she snaps. You know what I mean? And she wakes up and she fights back. 
and not necessarily physically fights back, but she starts living for herself and she leaves that abuser, right? And she puts her foot down and she does whatever needs to be done to set herself free from that situation. And she starts living the life that God called her to live, that she is worthy of. And she snaps out of that state. And I think for me personally on my journey, that has been the moment that I had to wake up and say like, yo, Calvin, like, bro, the time is going to pass by. It's been three years. It don't even, it feel like I just started trading last year. Like just being yeah, completely honest. I'm the same way. You know what I mean? Right. But it's like, Calvin, bro, it's been three years already. Are you where you came to Forex to be? And I want to look at the camera and let everybody know I am not where I should be right now. I'm nowhere near where I set out when I came into this skill to be. And it does get frustrating. But I got to understand also, Calvin, you got a whole bunch of ugly and bad ways that you were polluted with growing up that you have to, like, you got to let that, that ooze out of you. But now I'm getting it, bro. I'm understanding that you cannot, the market don't owe you nothing. Right. But you are not going to beat the market ever. Correct. So all that trying to gamble, all that trying to think you you can one-up the market, you'll get lucky sometimes. Mm -hmm. The market always wins, bro. The market always wins in the end. So you either going to play by the rules, manage that risk the right way. Like this conversation I told my, like I had with myself. Like, Calvin, you're going to either play the rules, manage risk, so that if the market decides that it's not going in your favor today, you do not blow your account and you still live the trade for a few more days. Or you get out there and you try to take every trade like it's the last and you're going to end up in this same spot, but time is still moving. You're going to do the same thing, but time is still moving, Calvin. So, bro, it's been a year. It's been two years. It's been three years. You're doing the same thing, making the same mistake, challenge after challenge, account after account. But guess what? You only hurting yourself because time ain't stopping just because you're resetting and starting a new challenge. Time don't stop, bro. Right. So every time you do the same thing you're doing, Calvin, I'm telling myself this, you are essentially delaying your gratification and your 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 promotion to the next level and getting closer to what you came for. There's something that um Mark Douglas always say in his YouTube video and it's like people don't want to change, bro. Like and I think that's where that's, he say that what separates the successful people for the uh, uh, from the unsuccessful people is some people don't want to change their mindset. There's this um quote um, it takes a painful experience for you to finally change your ways. And I completely believe in that 100%. Because it took for me to f fail not one challenge, not two challenge, but fail my third challenge. And not just that, but after being up 8.9% in two trades, bro, and be greedy and blow it, bro, it changed my mindset. It allowed me to understand and realize and accept that I'm battling. It, this, this is a battle between me and myself. Mm. This is not me in the market because I'm going to always lose. Like you just said, yeah. I'm going to always lose with the market. It's a battle with me and myself. Yeah. And it's, a, it's it's basically overcoming anything that you're struggling with as a person. If you're a greedy person, if you're an impatient person, this is what you're battling. Until you get that down pat, you're going to be stuck. It's going to be a struggle. And you're going to delay your, um, you're going to delay the process. Yeah. And that's why, that's, ba that's basically my perception of how I perceive the market now. I agree. So, like for you right now what is what is a number or range that you would want to make from trading per month within like yeah like just frame? from uh, like no time what would frames. be comfortable yeah yeah like All what's right. the ideal like first comfortable target that you would want to hit making consistently from trading each month I want to I want to pass a hundred k account. I mean, I have a vision board. Yeah. No, actually, I have a two hundred k account. But but I mean, I'm saying like in terms one, of like withdrawal money that you're making from trade. Like it don't matter if it's funded or personal. But what's that like dollar amount? Like that first level that you would want to get to. If I can be consistent with uh with maybe five thousand a month, bro, that'll be a blessing. Yeah. That'll be beyond like a that. blessing, bro. Yeah. So, let me ask you this. That's my man Mikey's favorite thing to say <laughs> behind the camera. Let me ask you this. But anyway, uh, so 5000 a month, okay? When you think of that, and now let's reverse engineer it, how much would you have to make per week 
in order to justify that 5000 per month? Like, have you thought about that? Like, have you done the math to see how much you got to make per week? Per week? I mean, if, if $5,000 is $5,000 in a month, that's, that's like a little bit over $1,000 a week. Okay. So maybe about 1200 a week. Okay. So now you do that. Have you thought about, okay, how much capital would I need in order to justify that amount per week in order to get to that amount per month? Like, have you ever thought about that and wrote that down? Like, how much capital would I need? Like, to be able to to, to do this comfortably? Yeah, like, to justify that yeah, 1200 a week. Oh, okay, boom. All right, so you need 100 k Right. So, is that 100 k going to be money you save up and put into a personal account, or is that 100 k going to be through prop firms? Through a prop firm. Okay. So, have you, like, the reason I'm asking all this, and I'm, I'm like, reverse engineering it, is because, like, have you written that plan down? Because that's what, I like, so that was the shift that I had board. to make. Okay, yeah, okay, boom. Have a vision board. Yeah. Okay, so you do have this plan kind of written down. Right. Perfect. Because that's the change that I had to make. Like, I had to literally write down my goals. You know what I mean? Right. And reverse engineer it. This is how much I need to be funded, or this is how much needs to be in my personal. This is what my daily targets need to be in order to get to this amount per month and be comfortable with that amount per month. No, I consider this confirmation because I am currently reading a book called... Um what is it? Think, How to Think and Grow Rich by... Yeah, Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great just, book. I just read that yesterday. It's bro. a great book. He was he was basically saying, have a number, a specific goal number amount, mm. and just focus on it. Mm -hmm. So that I consider this confirmation, bro. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, man. Um, In terms of... Because you are... A, you know, your father, you are the head of your household. Uh, like You and your fiance, you guys live together now, right? Not currently, no. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, but you do have a daughter. You share yes. a daughter together. Yes. So, you're supporting basically like two households, basically. No, just basically, it's just our, well, I have a roommate, basically. Mm -hmm. And my fiance, she's with her mother still. Okay. So, basically, I... I, I provide for me and mine and my daughter and my fiance. Okay. Like she works, I work, and we both have the same goal. We still doing it. We, we both do the same thing. We both trade, bro. Gotcha. So we both have the similar mindset, same goal. So attacking this. Okay. That's good. So trading is really like how you see yourself building your family. You know, like, you guys are looking for trading to work so that you guys can get married. You guys right. can move in together. Absolutely. You guys can have that quote-unquote fairy tale, you know, mom, right. dad, children, you know, right. that fairy tale ending. So, for me, like, has it hit you that, or is it pressure that I'm delaying my family being together under one household? Like, do you ever feel pressure or blame that, because of your inconsistencies trading, you're the reason that you guys are not together in one household yet. No, because um, I ain't gonna lie, like, I just, everything takes time. Nothing gonna happen overnight, and you gotta have patience. Like, when me and my fiance first started dating, I always told her to have patience for me. Mm. And my girl was always speaking certain things in my life when we first started dating that I didn't really understand. She was telling me, I'm gonna impact many people's lives. Wow. And I didn't understand the moment because I, I've been a, I was a graphic designer. And I told her that I have a business mindset. And I want to expand this graphic design, eventually do photography and do cinematography and stuff like that and be a content creator. That was my thing. Mm -hmm. um, she always spoke life into that. But um, as, as for delaying the process, no. Because I know I'm going to get it, but it's not on my time. It's on God's timing. And also, not just that, um, it's when the time is right, things gonna present, it's going to present itself. It's yeah. not like we're in a dire situation to make things happen. Um, when the time comes, it's going to come. Man, I love it. I, I love that. And the reason I ask that question is because a lot of times we feel pressure as men, you know, that like, man, I'm holding my family back. I'm stopping my family from getting to this next level. And I'm so, man, that was the perfect way to put it. Like, no. In the beginning, yeah. Yeah. In the beginning, um, yeah, I was... I was I was so anxious. That's why I was making such like so much impulsive decisions. But now, absolutely not. No. Yeah. No. I like that because you don't need to feel pressure. You don't. And I think a lot of times when we look at other people, 
that can make us put pressure because we're like, man, look how this person living. I don't deserve to be like this. I deserve to be with my my fiance and my daughter every night. But it's like, look, what's coming for Stretch is coming. Right. What Stretch need to do is just continue to work his process mm -hmm. and get Stretch right. Exactly. And when Stretch get right, the results going to follow that. Absolutely. And it's not going to be here today and then gone tomorrow. It's going to be here continually forever. It's going to be consistent. And so I'm just happy that you do think that way because I know as men, we can feel that pressure. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that you're just saying, look, I'm doing the best I can do right now. I go to work. I'm looking to better myself through the skill. I'm working on what I need to work on to be better and to grow as a trader. And all I can do is just provide for me and mine right now. And that's what you're doing, bro. Yeah, my fiance, she sees it as, as well. Like she yeah. sees it too. So it's like once she sees it and she's always talking positive about everything, she's not stressing that, nothing. I'm not. Why stress? I love it, bro. Time is going to come. Man, that's so powerful, bro. <laughs> that is Absolutely. so powerful. Um, For you, you do live in Miami. Yes. And we just talked about how sometimes you can look at other people and be a little discouraged. In any point, at any point on your journey, did you ever, because you live in Miami and a lot of the stuff that we see online is based out of Miami, the foreign cars, the women, the yachts, the mansions, you know, have you ever felt belittled or you felt like, man, like, what am I doing? Because you live in such a city that's filled with so much wealth and money at any part on your journey, have you ever felt discouraged because of that or rushed yourself because you see all of this, you live around all this stuff? That's a real good question, bro. So what I do, and this is not all the time. This is every now and then. Um, I love to go by the bay. Under the Wrecker Becker Causeway, you have the beautiful Miami skyline. You have the ocean view, and especially at night. And I just sit there and I'll meditate and just just kind of foresee the life that I'm going to live. I know I'm going to live. And I also ask myself, um, I also tell myself, okay, they make these big high rises down here in Brickell. Um, penthouse is probably 25000 a month. It's built for someone to live there. If they can do it, why can't I? Mm. There's a way to make my, like, allow myself to be able to live up there. And I, not just there, like, I go to a park, Bayfront Park, every now and then, at the other park on the um, on the north side of the American Airlines Arena. Doyle goes to that park all the time yeah, to yeah. walk his dog. I thought I'd see him there one day. So, yeah, I go there and I'll just brainstorm and just think things through and just basically reminisce, bro, about life and always remember where I come from. And where I'm grateful where I'm at. My situation can always be a lot worse. And there's people in this world that's in a far more worse situation than I am. So I have so much to be grateful for. And not just that, I mean, I have the skill to be able to change my life. And it's not just trading. You know, I can I feel as if if you invest your time, your energy, and effort into any skill, it doesn't necessarily have to be trading. And if you're dedicated, committed, you will be able to accomplish it. Yeah. Like I told myself next year I want to learn real estate. I okay. want to get into real estate. That's my next thing. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's it exists to be learned. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to learn it. That's dope, man. Right. But, but but yeah, um, I'm happy you saw it in a positive way. Have like, to. it never really made you feel down. You know, right. for me, sometimes it did make me feel down. You know, you do see people living, you know, a certain way around you. You see people driving certain cars. You know, you... You know, me, I drive by different people homes and I start doing research like who owns this home? You know, I'll do a Google search to see if I can figure out who owns it and what do they do? And, and you know, I'm looking at people I'm like, how did they get in this position? Like, how did they get that career or how did they make enough money to buy this? Right. And sometimes like on my journey, I have and I battle that sometimes. Like I'd be like, man, am I doing enough as a man? You know what I mean? Like, am I honing all the potential that God has given me? Correct. And then I just get reminded, Holy Spirit, just come on me and just remind me like, listen. Your job is to focus on what I've given you right now. Your job is to focus on what's in front of you right now and to be the best at that. Right. And it's my job to handle promotion. You know, the Bible talks about seed time and harvest. You know what I mean? So when you plant a seed, you bury that seed in dirt. Right. And you water that seed. You nurture that seed, right? And eventually that seed grows and it harvests into whatever tree or whatever plant it is and then that plant that tree produces some type of fruit Correct. but that's a process and so my job is just to do the 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 uh, bearing of the seed water the seed and then once it start growing i need to make sure it's getting the right sunlight i need to keep warm 
you know, I need to keep watering it. I need to keep nurturing it. Correct. But it's God makes a decision on when the fruits of that tree starts to bloom. He makes a decision on, you know, I can't control when the sun comes out and when it goes down or how much it shines. God controls that. Correct. It's just my job to position the plant that's growing to get the sunlight. It's my job to make sure the plant gets the water. Right. You know what I mean? But if there's no water around me, I can't control that. Like I can't control if there's a drought and there's no water available. That's out of my control. I got to depend on God to give me the resources that I need to make it happen. And it's me to take the resources and work them. Right. But God provides the resources. You know what I mean? I like that. And so, yeah, bro, I just remind myself of that. But I do sometimes battle with that, like feeling like I'm not doing enough. Um, but, man, I just love the way you put that. I thank you. Uh, for doing this, absolutely. Uh, number one, I know in the beginning when I reached out to you, you was like, "Nah, man, I'm not. I'm still working a job. I'm not really, you know, there yet. Still working on some things." But I think we all have that approach. But I'm happy that you agreed to share your journey, your struggles, and where you are right now because this video is going to encourage a lot of people. Because stretch five years from now is not going to be stretch that's sitting here today. And that. you're going to look at this video and everybody, it's going to be tens of thousands of people that's going to watch this video and they're going to look at where you're going to be in the future. And they're going to look back at this video and say, man, he did it. He did it. And it feels so good to be able to get the motivational comments that I get on my channel from you, from Charlene FX, from Doyle, from Carlos FX. I mean, there's so many decent, like, up, like known traders that, like, it gives me words of encouragement, bro. Yeah. And it's so inspiring me. And it gives me that 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 push to like to keep locking in, like you have no matter to, bro. what. Because man, everyone sees the good in me, bro. Yeah, you have to. Everyone sees the good and in me. And what you gotta understand is we're all you in some way. Right. You know, yeah, you work a job, but I have a business that's outside of Forex that I work every day. Right. You know what I mean? And I am not confident enough to leave my business and just trade full time. I'm not. And I'll look in the camera and say that. I won't do that. Right. You know what I mean? And so we're all a version of you in some way. We're all developing or we're new. We're growing and we're getting there. Right. You know, and I think we need to take pride in that. Be happy about that and stop trying to, you know, it's so many traders that just, you know, they want to go and just do a prop firm interview and they want to have that clout. But they don't want to go on if they only make a $500 withdrawal. They want to go on when they're making a $50,000 payout or a a a $15,000 payout. Correct. But if they got a $500 payout from a prop firm, they won't go and do an interview then. Why not? Celebrate where you are. Stop trying to, to look like you got it all together and look like what you see other people doing. Right, exactly. That's $500 that you did not have to go to your job and sit and clock in to make. That's $500 that I didn't have to sit on my computer and work for a client. That's $500 that came from me using my mind to multiply money from the skill set that I took the time out to learn. And so I think by you doing this interview, it's going to motivate other new beginner development traders to embrace where they are on the journey and not feel ashamed or not feel like what they're doing doesn't weigh up to what another influencer is doing. Like that don't matter. Trading is about personal growth, personal gain. And for me, man, I'm I'm blessed. I'm blessed with my withdrawals. I'm blessed with my, you know, 1%, 2%, 3% on 100K account withdrawals. I'm blessed. I'm blessed with those. I'm thankful for those. And I don't let another person that's withdrawing uh, from prop firms 10,000 per month or 20,000 or 30,000 per month. I don't let that knock what I'm doing. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for me. I'm right. good. You know what I mean? My family's good. We good. But I'm not going to allow somebody else's success to over trump or overshadow what I'm doing because I think the growth that I'm having is amazing. And I think the growth that you're having and how you're developing and you're coming to your mindset is amazing. But when we start that, nah, man, I don't really feel like that's good enough. I don't really want to talk about that. Nah, man. If it's growth, celebrate it. Celebrate it and put it like out there. Like and yeah, bro, we gotta normalize it, bro. We gotta normalize it. For real, for real. We gotta normalize it. I said this yesterday. This is the only industry. The only industry, like this is how the devil works in our minds, bro. This is the only industry, literally, where somebody, for instance, 
you're in a trade, and let's say you're on a 10K challenge, or better yet, let's say a 50K challenge, and you up $100, and you see prices not breaking a resistance, and you know it's finna reverse, but you look at that $100 profit, and you say to yourself, man, that ain't good enough. I want more. This is the only industry where we will sit and watch that trade go back and go in negative and close out with a negative and be satisfied because we did not want to close out with $100. But we're the same people that if I finish trading and I walk in the mall and I see $100 floating across me, blow across me on the ground, I would run and pick that $100. I would not just let that $100 just blow past me and not stop and pick it up. That's deep. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. This is the only industry, bro, where we see stuff on a digital screen and we're up. And we are willing to let that go back negative because, oh, that's not good enough for trading. But in live reality, we will see that same dollar amount and we will run and pick it up. It's the devil, bro. I'm telling you, it's the it's, 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 it's a deceptive, it's man. a deceptive demonic mindset, bro. I and I want to tarnish that, bro. You celebrate anything that you make in this market if you watch me right now. You celebrate and be grateful for that and stop trying to compare yourself to other people because all you're doing is you're living in a fantasy world. Because half of the people online that's talking, that's in comments, they're not even profitable. Bro, the statistics don't lie, bro. The Funded Trader CEO came out. I love the transparency of the Funded Trader. Shout out to the CEO over there. All I love the transparency that those guys give. But he did a video and he talked about how the majority of people fail phase one. You know, less than that, make it to phase two. And less than that, actually, when they get funded, actually get to the first payout. It's crazy numbers, bro, that he revealed. Right. And so the numbers don't lie, bro. So when you see everybody out here with the lip service talking about how great they doing, bro, everybody can't be doing great because the numbers are the numbers, bro. The numbers are the numbers. So I'm just like, yo, we need to stop this nonsense and be grateful. You make $50 this week trading on a 100K funded account. If that is what the trade is telling you, the most you can get out of that trade, if it's not breaking a certain area and you up $50, you better take that $50 and be grateful for that $50. And that's my stance, bro. I agree. That's I agree. my stance, bro. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Because I was there, bro. I let so much, bro, I let so much money slip through my fingertips with funded accounts, bro. Because I'm trying to live up to what somebody else is doing, bro. Never again, bro. I'm not doing that. I'm grateful. So if I only do 1% to 2% a month on my 100K account, I don't care. That's one to $2,000 I did not have. Exactly. That's now extra in my bank account. Exactly. That's how I, like I see that. it. I like that. Yeah. So, bro, before we get out of here, I want you to, what encouragement would you give to a fellow new trader, just like me and you, we both new traders, new development traders. What encouragement would you give to a fellow new trader that may be watching right now, that may be going through some things, that may be struggling with some things? What type of encouragement would you give to our new trader brother or sister that's watching us right now. I ain't gonna lie. If you're watching me, um, don't give up. Like, if I can do it, you can do it. Don't ever give up. Man, the sky is the limit. Whatever you set your mindset to do and you lock in and you focus on it, you can do it. All things are possible. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, guys, this has been Confessions. Of two new traders that's on this journey, man. And we just, like, for real, for real. Like, I just encourage you all. Focus on you. Focus on your growth. If you've never made $2 without having to work or do anything, if you've never made $5 while you were sleeping, be grateful when you're in that trading account and you're up $5, you're up $2. Be grateful. That's money being multiplied. I know we want to have six-figure days and seven-figure months, and we want to do all the lavish things. But if we're not grateful with the little growth right now, how are we ever going to get to a point where we can sustain the big growth later? And every single person that we see online that has made it big, they have had to go through the same journey that we are currently going through. So we cannot skip the process just because we like them, we idolize them, we are fans of them. We can't skip the process and avoid the things that they went through in order to get to where they are. We got to now go through that to get to where we want to be. 
And guess what? It's a little easier for us now because of funded accounts. All right. It is a little easier now. So all I want to say is I hope that this transparency from two new traders having a conversation, hope this was motivating for you. Hope this was encouraging for you. I hope this takes the weight off your shoulders to just be comfortable with your growth and where you are. And uh, it's your boy Calvin, a new trader. I look forward to running into you at the bank one day, but you cannot meet me there. You got to beat me there. When me and Stretch FX pull up to that bank, you should be walking out, duffel bag on your shoulder, big smile on your face. We just believe that we all going to be successful. So till next time, God bless you. Take care. I'll holler at you later. Peace.